Hi, I'm Pat. All right, so in this problem, they give us this function, h of v, arc cosine of v over 2. They're asking us to graph that function, but then also to compare that graph to the graph of the parent inverse trigonometric function. Okay, so let's start there. Let's start by getting a handle on the parent function and even what that graph looks like. So uh, the parent function in this case, I hope it's fairly clear that it's arc cosine. Okay, because the only the only extra complication is that v divided by two, but the main function is going to be the arc cosine. So let's make our like f of v or whatever you'd want to call it equal to arc cosine of just v, and that'll be my parent function. As I mentioned, let's take a look at the graph of that, and um, as we're getting more and more accustomed to these inverse trig functions. It's absolutely okay to be thinking about what it means in terms of our good old familiar regular trig functions. And I'll show you what I mean along those lines, because if I'm going to graph this guy, I think I'd like to be able to see things expressed in terms of the original trig functions that I know and love so well. So here's how I would do that. Is this f of v is just a y, so arc cosine of v, and the relationship between those inverse trig functions in your original uh, functions, trig functions, are that they're inverses of each other, which means that this uh, input to the arc cosine function produces this y value as an output, but for the original cosine, then the inputs and outputs just switch roles. So in other words, this y equals arc cosine of v is the same thing as saying v equals cosine of y. And now things are back into familiar territory for me because I think I can handle the cosine of whatever value you give me pretty well. All right, now there's one other thing here though with these inverse trig functions is that there is a restriction and the restriction in this case is zero is going to be less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to pi. You might remember that where we had to restrict our original trig functions in order for them to even have inverses, okay? All right, so what that's gonna tell me now then is um, I wanna try to graph this. So let's get to like a, an xy table and then I'll be able to get some points, some ordered pairs, and then graph them. First thing, though, is that um, we typically think x, y, okay? But this problem did start off as h of v. So you might notice my independent variable just along the horizontal axis is marked as v, not x. Not that it matters, okay? If I'm even over here saying x, y table, it's more of a v, y table. Okay, but in fact, I'm also going to twist this up on you. Is in order for me to in order for me to be able to capitalize on this right here, notice that I need to know what y is first in order to find the cosine of that, and then that will tell me what the v is. So when I get to my table here, I'm going to make my first column y and start picking values of y that I know in terms of my trig functions and I'm using this compound inequality to guide me as well. So, so y is gonna be between zero and pi, so let's pick some values here in this first column for y. And I'm gonna pick zero and pi over four and pi over two, three pi over four, and we'll end at pi, okay? following that compound inequality. And then next, we can use this v equals cosine of y to fill in this column where v will just equal cosine of y. And this is what I meant by, um, I can find cosine of different angles. I'm pretty familiar with that. So cosine of zero is one. Cosine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Three pi over four, cosine of that, negative square root of two over two. And cosine of pi, negative one. All right, so let's take this information and try to graph it. 
Now, um, when we're talking about mixing things up a little bit in terms of an XY table, but ours is a VY table, but also we went with um, picking values for Y in order to find V. What that now means in terms of my graph is that when I go to grab this first pair of numbers, um, one is the value left to right, and zero is my Y value. So one on the V axis and zero on the Y as a Y value, okay? Next point, pi over four was my Y value, square root of two over two is my uh, V value, so that means uh, on the V axis, I'm looking at the square root of two over two, which is around 0.7, right around there, and then up to pi over four, which is right about there on my Y axis. Okay, then next point, zero comma pi over two, zero pi over two, and then negative square root of two over two, right around there, and up to three pi over four, up to three pi over four, right about there. Finally, negative one on the horizontal axis, pi up the vertical, which is right about there. Okay, trying to make it neat enough that um, if I now connect the dots, that should look like the inverse cosine. All right, and again though, that was my parent graph, okay? All right, now what? Now, this problem gave us this H of V, where uh, this time it's arc cosine of V over two. But let's use that same thought process where this is a Y equals arc cosine of V over two, which I write that way so that then I can think about things in terms of the trig functions that I know real well, which means the uh, input here becomes output of a regular cosine function, y. But with that extra v over two, all that does in terms of the complication is like right now, solve for v, which just means to multiply by two. And so this is my expression for v. Oh, and by the way, I have that same restriction for um, y being between zero and pi. That's that same expression there, which actually means, back to my um, chart, is that I'm gonna use these same y values, okay? Plugging them in here, finding out what the cosine is, and then multiplying by two. Okay, and it gets better than that for us for this problem, is that we already did the cosine of y. That's what this middle column is. So now I can find my v equals two cosine of y by just doubling these values in the middle column. So this is gonna be a two, this is a square root of two, zero, negative square root of two, and negative two. Okay, all right. Now I'm going back to the graph and I'm plotting um, another curve. This time, I'll try to do it in red here even, but this third column will be my um, horizontal coordinate, and then my first column will be my vertical uh, coordinate. So two comma zero, two comma zero, right there. Square root of two is like 1.4-ish comma pi over four. 1.4 pi over four. About there, zero on the horizontal, up pi over two on the vertical, zero pi over two right there. Negative square root of two, so negative 1.4-ish, and then three pi over four, going up to about there. Finally, negative two, up to pi, negative two, up to pi, right about there. 
Again, trying to be neat enough that I can now connect the dots and hopefully have a decent looking graph in terms of this function. There we go, I think. Not bad. Okay, so this one was my H of V. And this green for me was the F of V which I'd like to get up there again, the labels even, because the final thing they asked for in this problem was to compare. So this second graph that I drew in red, how does it compare to the graph of its parent function? I hope you can see basically the same shape, except what we have is that H of V is a horizontal stretch of the graph of f of v. In fact, I can do a little bit better than that if I had said h of v is a horizontal stretch um, by a factor of 2 of the original parent graph. Okay, you can see that, right? Is that red graph looks like it just took the green graph and stretched from left to right. Okay, a lot of good thinking there though. So pat yourself on the back, but uh, also try some on your own.